Here we're going to look at a pretty interesting integral. So the one that we want to look at is the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 1 over x plus 1 times the natural log of x. We're going to use two tools to evaluate this integral. The first is known as the Wallace product, and that is the product is n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 to the n minus 1 times 2 to the n plus 1 over the quantity 2n squared is equal to 2 over pi, and we'll prove that. And then another one is a fairly simple integral, and that is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the y dy is equal to x minus 1 over the natural log of x. Okay, so let's get to proving this first tool. And we're going to use Euler's infinite product version of the sine function. So let's go ahead and write that down. And that says that sine of x over x equals the product as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over n squared times pi squared. So I won't derive that carefully. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that derive that carefully. But the idea here is you know that sine has zeros at every integer multiple of pi, of pi including 0. So dividing by x kind of cancels that root out at x equals 0. And then we have this product over here is kind of the factorization involving all of those other roots. So notice if we um, evaluate x at an integer multiple of pi, this thing will cancel out. Okay, great. And now what we want to do is take this infinite product representation of sine of x over x, and we're going to evaluate this at x equals pi over 2. So let's see what that gives us. So that's going to give us 2 over pi equals sine of pi over 2 over pi over 2. And so that's clear because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And then on the right-hand side, we have the infinite product n equals 1 to infinity of 1 minus pi squared over 4 over n squared times pi squared. Great. And now all we have to do is simplify this. So let's see what we can do. So this is going to be the product as n goes from 1 to infinity. Now we have 1 minus. So notice this pi squared and this pi squared can cancel. And then we have a 4 and an n squared left in the denominator. So we'll have 1 over 4 times n squared. Great. Now we'll give this a common denominator. So we'll think about 1 as being 4n squared over 4n squared so that we can combine those two terms. That'll give us the product. n goes from 1 to infinity of 4n squared minus 1 over 4n squared. But now we can factor the numerator. We can write that numerator as 2n minus 1 times 2n plus 1 because notice we have a difference of squares there. And then we can write 4n squared in the denominator as 2n quantity squared, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so we've proved this first tool. And now we're ready to move on to this second. So I'll start by taking a derivative of x to the y, which will motivate the antiderivative of x to the y. And I should say the derivative of x to the y, viewing x as a constant and y as a variable. So you might want to think about that as like the partial derivative with respect to y as of x to the y. So I want to rewrite that using an exponential trick. So notice that's the same thing as the partial derivative with respect to y of e to the y times the natural log of x. Again, we can think about that as e to the natural log of x all to the y power, but e to the natural log of x will cancel just to x, so we retrieve exactly what we have right here. Now what we can do is use the chain rule here. So notice in the exponent we have a y times the natural log of x, which means our derivative will be e to the y natural log of x times the natural log of x. But now we can rewrite this e to the y natural log of x as x to the y. So here we get the natural log of x times x to the y. Okay, great. But this derivative relationship will allow us to evaluate this integral fairly easily. So now we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the y dy. 
So we can just straight up take the antiderivative. Notice natural log of x is a constant in this case. So instead of multiplying by natural log of x, I need to divide by natural log of x. I'll have one over natural log of x times x to the y evaluated at zero and one. Now, if I evaluate this at one, I'll get x. If I evaluate this at zero, I will get one. And so that's gonna leave me with x minus one over natural log of x, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Okay, so now we're done with the second tool and we're ready to move on to our main result. So in light of the second tool, where we rewrote x minus one over the natural log of x, as this integral, that's exactly what we're gonna do here, and that will transform this single integral into a double integral. So let's go ahead and write that down. So now we're gonna have the integral from zero to one of one over x plus one, and now we're rewriting x minus one over the natural log of x as the integral from zero to one of x to the y, and now we have dy dx. But the way this is written right now, we have this single integral within another single integral. So we wanna write that as a double integral. So I'll rewrite that as the integral from zero to one and then the integral from zero to one of x to the y over x plus one dy dx. And now by Fubini's theorem, we can reverse the order of integration. We can do the x integral first instead of the y integral. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. So this is gonna be the integral from zero to one, the integral from zero to one of x to the y over x plus one dx dy. Okay, great. And now what I wanna do is just think about this inner integral, which is the x integral. And I wanna expand this using a geometric series. So I can do that thinking about this denominator as one minus the quantity negative x, which means I can expand that in powers of negative x. Okay, so I have the integral from zero to one, and then another integral from zero to one, I have x to the y, which I'm gonna factor out front, and then I can expand this as a geometric series. So that's gonna give me the sum n equals zero to infinity of minus x quantity to the n power, and then I have dx dy. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put that together and exchange the order of summation and integration, which I can do because of the dominated convergence theorem. So that's gonna give me this integral from zero to one, which is my y integral on the outside. And now I'm going to have the sum n equals zero to infinity, now what I wanna do is break this minus x to the n into a minus one to the n and an x to the n. So that's pretty straightforward. So I can bring that minus one to the n out of the integral. And then I wanna combine this x to the y with this x to the n, and that's going to be within the x integral. So I have the integral from zero to one of x to the y plus n, and now that's an x integral first and a y integral second. Okay, so now I can take the antiderivative of this with respect to x. Notice this exponent is never negative one, so I can just use the power rule there. So that's gonna give me the integral from zero to one. That's the y integral which is happening in the outside. And then I still have the sum n equals zero to infinity, and then minus one to the n, and then if I use the power rule here, that's going to give me x to the y plus n plus one divided by that new exponent, y plus n plus one. That needs to be evaluated at zero and one. And then finally do a y integral after that. And I wanna point out that these are x numbers of evaluation because our x integral was on the inside. Okay, I'll go ahead and bring this up and we'll move on to the next step. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. So we've taken our goal integral, which is the integral from zero to one of x minus one over x plus one times the natural log of x and decomposed it into this y integral and there's an infinite sum within the y integral. So we have this integral from zero to one, then the sum n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n, and then we have x to the y plus n plus one over y plus n plus one. We're evaluating that from x equals zero to x equals one, and then that's a y integral like I said before. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate this from x equals zero to x equals one to see what we get. So notice if we plug in one, we'll just have one. If we plug in zero, we'll just have zero. You might be worried here about these exponents, but notice these exponents are always bigger than one, given the fact that y is on the interval zero to one and n is a natural number, so we're okay there. So this is going to give us the integral from zero to one. Now we have this sum, n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n, and then one over y plus n plus one, Notice if we evaluate that at zero, we get zero, so we're okay. And then this is it within the dy integral. Now I wanna exchange the order of summation and integration again by the dominated convergence theorem. So I can take this sum, n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n outside. And now I have the integral from zero to one of one over y plus n plus one dy. But now notice that's just a reciprocal of a linear type polynomial in the variable y. So the antiderivative will be the natural log. So that's going to give me this sum n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n. And now I have the natural log evaluated at y plus n plus one. And then this evaluated from y equals zero to y equals one. You might say, well, I need absolute values around this natural log, but because of the values of y and the values of n, that's always positive, so we're good to go there. Okay, so now let's see what we get. That's going to give us this sum, n equals zero to infinity of minus one to the n times the quantity. When we plug in y equals one, we get the natural log of n plus two minus, when we plug in y equals zero, we get the natural log of n plus one. Great, so we've decomposed our goal integral down into this infinite sum. So now I'll go ahead and bring that up and then we'll finish it off. So I've brought that sum that we had at the bottom of the last board to the top, and now we're gonna do a little bit of a trick. So notice this is an alternating sum. What I wanna do now is decompose this so that we're summing two at a time. In other words, instead of having two terms in here, I wanna have four terms in here, and I want each term to be representative of two terms from this original sum. Okay, so I'm gonna write out a couple of terms from this sum so that we can understand how to recombine this. So let's start by looking at the n equals zero term. So we'll have minus one to the zero, which is one, and then we'll have the natural log of two minus the natural log of one. Good, now we know the natural log of one is zero, but I'll leave that in there for the structure. And now the next one will be the n equals one term. So notice if n equals one, we have minus one to the one, which is a minus sign, but I'll use that to flip the order of subtraction here. So we'll have plus the natural log of n plus one, so that'll be plus the natural log of two minus the natural log of three. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and look at the n equals two term. So minus one squared is one, so we don't have to change the order of subtraction. Then we're gonna have the natural log of four minus the natural log of three. And then next, we'll look at the n equals three term. So that's gonna be plus, and we'll use the minus one here to change the order of subtraction. So that's gonna be the natural log of four minus the natural log of five plus dot, dot, dot. But now what I wanna do is rewrite this sum where I group two terms at a time. In other words, the n equals zero and one term will be grouped together, the n equals two and three terms will be grouped together, and so on and so forth. So now I can rewrite this thing as the natural log of two plus the natural log of two minus the natural log of one minus the natural log of three. Good, so that'll be like my first term from this sum. And then for my second term from the sum, I can have the natural log of four plus the natural log of four minus the natural log of three minus the natural log of five, and then so on and so forth. 
So now if we look at this for a little bit, we see some structure in this. So we'll now we'll rename this big term, the n equals zero term, and we'll rename this big term, the n equals one term. And then we can rewrite this in the following way. This is gonna be the sum as n equals zero to infinity. So this is going to be the natural log of 2n plus two plus the natural log of 2n plus two, so notice two times zero plus two will be natural log of two, minus the natural log of two n plus one, minus the natural log of two n plus three. So that's the format of this first term, but notice that's also the format of the second term, and that will in fact be the format of all of the terms. So now we've grouped these two at a time. Now I wanna use a natural log rule to rewrite this as the sum n goes from zero to infinity of, the natural log of 2n plus 2 quantity squared all over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3. Great. Now we'll bring the sum in the natural log and turn it into a product. So that's going to give us something that looks like the natural log of the product as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2n plus 2 quantity squared over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3. And now notice that product inside of the log looks a lot like our Wallace product. And in fact, we can make it look even more like the Wallace product by re-indexing this, sending n to n minus 1. So that means this, this product is going to start at 1. And then this term is going to become 2n minus 1. This term will be 2n plus 1. And this term will be 2n. So that gives us exactly the reciprocal of this Wallace product. So this product inside the natural log will be pi over two, which makes our final answer the natural log of pi over two. And that's a good place to stop.